Uh, I know that some in our audience know the finer points of hockey. The Chris Johnston Show. We are your friends. The biggest stories, bringing you inside the game. What did you hear? The Chris Johnston Show, powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? What is going on? Here's Chris with your host, Julian McKenzie. Part of the game. Uh, Chris Johnston, is that a SDPN jersey I see that you are wearing for those watching on YouTube? You know it, my man. Oh, that is beautiful. I love that jersey. That's first or second edition. That's the very first one you got. When, yeah, when it from says the first edition on the front. Yeah, mine is second edition. Uh, I love that jersey. I don't know if they've planned on having any like third editions of that jersey. But like I, I just 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 noticed off top. I just had to say, like, dude, great jersey. Yeah, I was repping this at the family skate we did uh, on the 27th of December. Kind of an old family tradition that we used to do and then was, you know, a couple of years of pandemic where it didn't happen. And so it was nice to get back out there. Started to feel my age a little bit. I got an older brother and he's got sort of older kids. So I got niece and nephews who are 21, 19 and 17. Uh, and so couldn't keep up with my 17 year old nephew, Nico. He's uh, he's a speedster. He's uh, is he destined or has he already scored three goals in however many seconds you did when you were young? He probably did better than that yesterday. <laughs> he, he was pretty he was pretty darn good. I had I had an unfortunate moment though uh during the family skate. So my my niece brings her boyfriend for the first time that I'd met him to to the family events and then we're out there and you know again he's younger and he was playing D at one point and I was coming down on him and I recognized like there was no way I was like going to be able, like blow around the outside. So I just tried to chip the puck kind of like through him but of course hit his shin uh oh. in, in again in a very not competitive family game where no one's wearing much protective equipment and so i left the poor young man with a welt on his on his calf so i feel i feel a shin i feel pretty bad about that i mean i mean that's just his way of being indoctrinated into the family you could look at it that way yeah and Here's the thing. It wasn't like I was I got super competitive and took a crazy shot and hit him like it, it really was. I mean, I should just have known better than to try to be cute with anything because I don't have anything approaching skills at this age. So this point in time. But uh, yeah, he's got a story to tell now. Can you describe your uh so uh, do you are you playing any beer leagues? Like if you're if you're going to play right now, like Dangle says, all right, we're playing like five aside on like a pond or whatever what is your what is your playing style what is your playing style like how what can you contribute to and to a game i don't play in any beer leagues i, I must say I, I do have the i have like the curiosity again because i know there's some outdoor rinks around toronto where mm -hmm. there's just like pick up shinny so I, i'm planning on doing that a little bit the next few months um i you know i think i i skate okay <laughs> like nothing impressive but like i like judging by yesterday, we had a cross section of people and and that like I was I was in the upper echelon of being able to move around the ice. Um, but I don't you know, I literally was using a wooden stick yesterday. Like my dad got it out of the basement. It might it might be 20 years old. Like I have no idea where it originated, but it you know, I, I, I'm not very modern and, and certainly I don't have any crazy skills or anything like that. But, you know, it was it was honestly it was fun to get out and play. It's a cool family event because you're mixing all the generations um my nephew actually collects hockey jerseys like he really is into oh, that's cool. all kinds of different jerseys so he literally outfitted the entire game like anyone who didn't bring a jersey had one he had like a jets line a he had a, a capitals yarmir yager uh he had like an old school oilers jersey my sister wore i'm just going off the top of my head like a, another capitals jersey he had a phoenix coyote or an arizona coyotes jersey anyway it was pretty cool that everyone got to to wear jerseys and it's it's you know, we all do enough sitting around and eating and, and a little bit of drinking during the holidays. It's nice to do something that at least gets a, a bit of a sweat up. I'm just happy that we were able to take time during the holidays to do any of that. And the fact that you brought up this tradition, it really just clicked in my head that considering how COVID has gone for the last little while, not to dredge up COVID again, but I, it feels as if a lot of the traditions of being in person with people, going out to different places, like we're starting to see those come back like I was able to relive a tradition with with some of my buddies on Boxing Day where we normally go to a bar Burgundy Lion, Burgundy Lion actually and we'll watch like Premier League soccer like all day and like we haven't been able to do that for like the last 
two years. So it was it was fun to to relive that. Not not nearly the same. It's like did you injure any time. buddies by accident, or or was that just me? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. It, I'm just saying it was just. It was just really good to be able to celebrate Christmas, especially since I almost didn't make it home. You know, like that was that was that would have been really tough if because of all the airplane delays and and all that, if I wouldn't have been able to been home. So I'm really happy that I was able to to experience that. Yeah, I feel bad for anyone who has to travel right around the holidays and has a tight window to try to get somewhere and get back, because let's just face it. Travel disruptions happen to everyone. I've had a million in my day, but it's so hard around the holidays. There's so many people traveling and then. We did have a storm here uh, that hit the West Coast in Canada, but also the East Coast, um, and that disrupted things even further. So it's a, it's a tough spot, but I'm I'm glad you got back, man, because I was I wasn't that hopeful when your first flight got canceled and you were in the group chat. I wanted to be optimistic, but we've all seen this movie before, and I just I was worried you wouldn't get back, dude. So for to paint a picture for people, uh, going through security, supposed to be on this WestJet flight from Calgary to Montreal. And then they tell me, hey, man, your your flight got canceled. You got to go to the WestJet help desk. There's like a lady in the line just telling everyone like, hey, we're not able to rebook flights. Uh, if you're in Calgary, if you're from Calgary, just go home. You know, if this is a connecting flight, like book on another airline. Like it was it was looking pretty dire and, and it was looking for the ticket prices to, to fly home. Like we're talking like four digits. Like it was it was not looking good. It was not looking good at all. But then uh, one of my best friends, uh, their sister works at Air Canada. Shout out my friend Megan uh, for helping me through such a tough time and getting me on a flight from uh, Calgary to Toronto, then Toronto to Montreal through Air Canada. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it really worked out. I'm really I'm really happy. It was really only like a 10 hour delay. Like I didn't have to sleep through. I didn't have to sleep in the airport like some people have had it. Like it could have been so much worse for me, but it ended up working out. So I'm very very happy about that and i'm very happy about uh the fact that we were able to celebrate the holidays with the family and even if i was able to only be there for about a few days and i get and i didn't get to see everybody i was still really happy about the time spent i'm just confused why adam wilde didn't send the sdpn pj out for you but i mean you know i guess the man was busy with it around the holidays you know what i'm not gonna say nothing about that i'm just gonna leave adam wilde alone that dude, considering how sick he's been the last little while he probably used the pj to go to the, go to the drugstore to get himself some medication. That's probably why there was no fuel left in the SDPN jet. Well, that makes sense because I don't know about where you are, but the pharmacies don't have any medication left here. So, oh man, like I, I haven't checked. That's actually I, a I, thing. I, like you, it's hard to get Tylenol like a Shoppers Drug Mart in Toronto right now. It's crazy. What like is it just is it just because everyone's getting like what is it like everyone's getting sick? Like this is the first Christmas in a while I have not been sick. Knock on wood. I, I haven't been either, fortunately. I, I don't know what it is, but it's 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 a legit thing. I don't know if it's supply chain issues or I don't, who knows. It's been a weird few years, man. But you're right. It's good to be back to normal with the holiday traditions. I mean, even last year, Christmas, I didn't get to see my brother's family. They all had COVID. And and so, um, yeah, it was it was really good to be back. Saw Coburg Papa mm-hmm. had a brief stop in Coburg. Some of that was interrupted by the big storms I mentioned, but uh, good time good cheer and uh, just sad it went so quick but that's that's life that is life okay be honest with me because i am going to bring it up after we get on the other side of of um sports interaction which we'll talk about very briefly how much of the world juniors have you watched i watched canada's game against chechia okay and that's the only one they've played to the point we're recording right now i haven't watched any of the other games just because i was busy you know as i said i was out because those are happening during the day here and i was out doing the family skate and all that stuff yesterday okay just because like i only watched the first five minutes of that canada check your game and then like i had other like family friend plans throughout my time back home like i like i know well there's a particular topic that has gotten people very upset that i just want to touch on like a little quick but like it's just funny, just like, you know, this is supposed to be a tra- we talk about traditions, like the world junior should be this tradition that like we're it's appointment viewing on TV. And I'm just curious, like how people feel about it now that it's back at a regular time, but still kind of in the shadow of all of the investigation and and the 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 downturn of, of the brand, essentially, for for Hockey Canada in this country. So I was generally just curious about how like other people sort of feel about the world juniors around this time. I, I think it's going to be back to normal. We'll see. I mean, Canada lost the first game if they just 
if for some reason it doesn't come together for this team and they bow out early, that that might affect things. But, um, you know, we could talk about the brand, but it's all different. Play- like these individual players have nothing to do with it. I think it's a pretty exciting team. I know the result wasn't great in the first game, uh, but there's lots of exciting players in the tournament. I, I I think it'll pop. Just just my feeling. Halifax is an awesome place too. Uh, I think I mentioned I was there for a World uh, Championship back in 2008. It's a fun building, fun city. I I I think this is going to be a good one. But um, I've only caught the one game so far. How many World Juniors have you covered? I've never been to a World Junior tournament. Uh, I went oh. to I went to a game. I actually went to the final game in the Buffalo 2018, the gold medal game, just in the stands. Um, but I've never covered that event. And honestly, as much as I do love it, and I don't envy the people that cover it, I think it's hard to be away for the holidays. Uh, I know Ray Ferraro has talked about this, you know, and he left his job at TSN and uh, you know, did an interview with Bruce Arthur. I read in the Toronto Star about it and just said, like, it was hard being away at Christmas all the time. Um, that wasn't the reason he left the job, but it, it's one of the downstream benefits for him. And, and um, yeah, but like, I love, I, I will say, I, I've always watched the tournament. I've always enjoyed it, but uh, I'm happy to let my colleagues go out there and cover it. I remember one of my, uh, one of my good friends now in Calgary, Aaron Vickers, who uh, writes stuff for daily hive in the NHL. He was telling me how I think one Christmas he covered the world juniors and like he drove into Saskatchewan. I just thought about the idea of like being alone in this hotel room on Christmas day, the day before this big tournament starts and like, yeah, I don't know how I'd feel about the idea of spending Christmas covering the world junior hockey championship as big of a deal as it is in this country. I, I don't know. Like that would, I would take, I mean, that would take, a, I don't know if it would take a lot, but like it would have to be a really good story for me to be like, you know what, man, like I got to take time away from not being with my family or having to delay Christmas plans or making them so much earlier. Like, I, I don't know. Like that's, well, that's a we, lot. The truth is we all got to make a living though. I mean, that's there's true. A, I've gone to a lot of games in a lot of cities at a lot of times I'd rather be doing something else, but I mean, it, it was my job for a period of time to travel wherever the Leafs played. And so you just do it right. And and always those games happen around Christmas time too. I mean, I remember flying home on the 24th from Arizona from a game and you know, you're getting home at the at night on the 24th and then you're back to work on the 27th. Like it's, Man. it's not a big window. And, and, but this is the players and the coaches too, right? There's a whole slate of games last night in the NHL, December 27th. And, there was a road team in each of those games. So all those people's families had pretty compressed window to, to celebrate. I mean, that's just a fact of life. So I, I'm not saying I would never cover it. If if one of my bosses says I has to have to, then you got to make a choice, but uh, I'm with you. It's it's, I, I think it's a great event though. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to take anything away from it. it. Selfishly. I benefit from it. I'm sitting on my couch watching being entertained. Um, you know, same with the NFL. I don't know about you. I watched a ton of NFL over the the holiday, just the way it all worked out with the games. I mean, I was in my semifinal in my league, fantasy football, so I was dialed all in on that. But people got to work around those games in the stadiums, media and all that, too, and the players. So, Before we get to sports interaction, did you win your semifinal? I did. I'm into the final. Beat Steve Simmons and Son. It's a long-running media uh, fantasy football league, hockey media fantasy football league, and I'm trying to become the first ever third-time champion. So... I have a tough final against Eric Dohatchik and his son uh, this week, but uh, I'm feeling confident that I'm going to fly another flag. Must be nice to win your semifinal in fantasy football. I guess I can't relate. I lost mine. Sorry, bud. (laughs) All right. Time for uh, Sports Interactions. uh, You can bet that segment. You can bet that with David Bastel. Brought to you by Sports Interaction. Get in the action and make a play. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Welcome to You Can Bet That. Remember to hit up sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN for all of your gaming needs. There's something very interesting I want to share with you all today that you can find on the Sports Interaction website. Normally we go through uh, NHL games, NHL player props, NHL props, NHL futures. There is a section called Dangles doozies and uh i can't think of too many people across this country who have the name dangle aside from our buddy steve dangle so uh yeah there's a bunch of doozies in there such as uh should if sheldon keith could be uh, the winner of uh, the jack adams trophy uh that is at 21.8 and that has been given a boost actually with a max bet of 25 dollars. and there's also some prop bets 
uh, surrounding uh, William Nylander. Do you think he scores 50 goals or more this year? Uh, yes is at 3.60. No is at 1.25, CJ. What do you think about William Nylander? He's looking really good. Yeah, his line's really cooking. He's with Austin Matthews and Michael Bunting right now. If you look at their five-on-five five numbers the last 15, 20 games, probably the, the best line in the league over that period of time just in terms of chances generated and the, the time spent in the offensive zone. He scored a beautiful overtime winner uh, against St. Louis, kind of an individual effort at the end of a long shift. So he's he's feeling himself. I mean, he had a great year last year too. I, th I think 50 goals is a reach. Um, you know, there's only a handful of players that are going to do that in any given year. But if if he stays on this line and, and you know, I guess all things are possible. You know, the, the coach of the year one is, is kind of interesting to me because it seems like you need a narrative to, to win that award, it seems. You know, and, and to be clear, the writers, I've never voted on that award. I'm not part of the, the Broadcasters Association that does. But it seems like, you know, it's the, the coach who does something unexpected. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't know what Sheldon Keefe could do or that would fit a narrative. I mean, even if the Leafs were to roar back and somehow win a president's trophy, would, would people be banging the drum about this? I'm, I'm not so sure. So, um, you know, that's not advice because look at who, who knows who's going to win. We're not even halfway through the season yet, yeah. but it, it tends to be like new coach in a new place. So maybe like Jim Montgomery or Bruce Cassidy, who's, you know, <laughs> who have ties to each other's teams. Um, or, you know, maybe if the Devils have fallen off, but, you know, Lindy Ruff might have got in there. I mean, it'd, it'd be interesting to see how, how that plays out. But it just, I can't remember. I think the last Leafs coach to win was Pat Burns, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think Pat Quinn ever won the Jack Adams Award in Toronto. So it can be hard when you're in a market where there are expectations, put it that way. I mean, because how do you exceed those expectations? How do you look like you've done better than was expected? I wonder now, you're, you're making me think about all these different other options for Jack Adams. What about Pete DeBeer in, in, in Dallas and considering how that team has been playing as well as they've been playing? What about Rick Bonus in Winnipeg? Like the expectations for those two teams, I think they're surpassing them right now. Those are also two viable candidates. Right. And they got they got narrative too. Like they've got good teams and they've done a good job. I'm not I'm certainly not like saying that the job that the coach isn't doing is good, but you know, with Rick Bonas going to Winnipeg, that team missed the playoffs last year and they've had a real big bounce back. I mean, I think that's the kind of guy that tends to get love for this award you know john cooper doesn't get love for this award right all tampa does every year is is have one of the best teams in the league and go to the finals but um you know john cooper you don't you don't hear bantied around the same way and so i think it can be hard when you're on a team that's expected to be good and jokes aside about the least playoff success they've been really good regular season team for a long time now by the way, uh, speak, you mentioned playoff success. Yes, you can bet on if the Leafs will advance to the second round of the playoffs in Dangles Doozies. And you can check all that out at sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on this segment. Uh, we'll be back on uh, Friday because we're doing Wednesday, Friday this week with a new segment of the show. Uh, for all the best odds before game, in game, and the best props, sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. All right. I, I wanted to bring up the World Juniors because we live in a really, really weird time where if you try this Michigan move, it's a bad thing. We're not going to Michigan our way to any final here at some World Junior Championship. Oh, no. Heaven forbid. It, it is. We are in a crisis now, CJ, because Team Canada did the Michigan twice and failed, and it led to a loss against Team Czechia. Where do you stand on the Michigan debate? I need a bit more info because I have been living under a Christmas rock. Okay. Like who's who's sounding the crisis alarm? Like who says this is a crisis? Okay. So there have been like people Media going people, off on it. Is it I think coach? it's like a it's a Twitter thing. I know Dylan Genther, I think there's the I reference I referenced the quote from him saying we're not going to Michigan our way to the final. Like it's it's evidently been something that people have discussed. I'd like Connor Bedard, I forget who the other player was, tried Adam to do Adam Fantilli. The move. Adam Fantilli. They both tried to do the move against Team Czechia. I saw one of them. I wasn't sure if it was Fantilli or Bedard who did it. But in that five minutes I watched of that Canada-Czechia game, I saw it attempted at least once. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. It's going to be that type of game. But well, like, it was attempted twice. It went 0 for 2. It yes. created, especially the Bar Bedard one, was an elite scoring chance. The goaltender made a nice play yeah. to, basically get, to basically get his head in the way. But to recognize what was happening and not leave that area over his shoulder exposed, which is what 
a goalie I think typically might do if he just thought a, a wrap a typical wraparound was coming and he was trying to protect the bottom part of the net. Um yeah, like is this a thing? I, I guess you have to talk about something after a loss. Um, but I can't even imagine that someone believes this is why Canada isn't winning. I mean, maybe I suppose if you're really trying to stretch your brain and galaxy brain it and be like, it's a sign that they're not focused on doing the right things to win. Um, but I think even that's foolish. I mean, the, the Bedard one in particular, like that's that's a goal. If he does that, like that probably has like a crazy expected goals rating. Uh, if if you know the odds of that going in are pretty high, the way he pulled it off and he got well around the net and had a clear shot at it. Um, so why why would we discourage that? I, I don't understand. I mean, sure, Canada, a lot of goals went in at the other end. Uh, and I suppose we could be arguing about goaltending a little bit and de defensive yeah. play and defensive assignments, but Canada also didn't score enough in that game to win. And so I want Connor Bedard trying the craziest crap he can think of uh, because I think he's going to fill the net in this tournament as he has pretty much everywhere he's played since probably since he had a hockey stick in his hand. And, you know, let's, I, I want more Michigans. I hope they Michigan their way to the final. I think they should double down and go just like make a rule. You only score on Michigan's <laughs> like why, like why this can't be a thing. Like even in Canada in, in the year, almost 2023, we just cannot have this be an actual debate. Um, like there's been several Michigan goals scored in the NHL. These players have grown up watching those highlights. They're probably better at executing it than even the most talented NHL players. Cause they've been at it longer. And I, I, I mean, I, I know how the, the joy tends to get sucked out of these events sometimes in the sense that, like, you got to grind it out and win. But I, I'd like to see them. I urge them to all go for the Michigan. I mean, let's put up a like a CJ show bounty, like get a thousand <laughs> bucks if, if to the first team Canada player to execute the Michigan and score a goal. Because I like, I can't. I yes. just am not going to live in a world where we're saying you can't do that or you shouldn't do that or that that's why they lost. I mean, they defended atrociously and the goaltender didn't back them up and then they got in a hole and they, obviously there was a, a five minute power play in that game. Like there's a lot of things that went against them, but I just, I to watch the game and, and conclude that the two failed Michigan attempts when the game was scoreless where the reason they lost is like a real that we like, it's like a meme at this point. Like that can't be real. Uh, by the way, just for full context with Dylan Genther, uh, I'm just going to take the uh, quote that uh, has been posted by Joshua Clipperton, a former colleague of ours at CP. Uh, it's yeah. a skilled play. We're not going to Michigan our way to the final. We're trying it a lot. It's a skilled play. I get it. But I think that's kind of how our game's going right now. We're trying to scale our way through. We're trying to toe drag, beat guys one-on-one. -on -one. To win, you have to play the right way. And that... that Soul side note here, that could be a whole issue in itself with the way he's saying that. Play together and play as a team. It starts with the simple side of the game, winning battles, our skill. There's no problem that way. It's the compete level, the one-on-one -on -one battle and stuff like that. Like, I actually <laughs> get what he's saying, though. I mean, I'm not. I get I'm what gonna... he's saying, too. I get what he's saying, too. But, like, uh, I should be like clear. To... I'm not taking a run at Dylan Gunther specifically. It's no. more if any media folks or whatever. Like, I mean, that's that's obviously the conversation they're having as a team. Because they look at the they look at teams on paper and they they probably feel as though there's no more skilled team in the tournament. And so they think, how do we best win a tournament where it's single elimination games where a lot can go wrong, you know, once you get beyond this round robin group stage, and they need to defend better and they need to not take risks and not, you know, give up turnovers that could, you know, give the other teams life. Like I understand why that's a discussion in their dressing room or amongst their game planning. But I, I just hope that no one is really believing the Michigan is is why they're losing. I mean, come on. Right. But also at the same time, like, I'm as totally I say, that thousand dollars that stands like we need to see a successful <laughs> Michigan. Like, let's not move past that. Also, but like to your point, the like, show is putting money on the board. Team oh, Canada. my God. For So 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 we'll put that out there. I mean, if David Bastel is with us, we could have easily had that for sports interaction, too. But no, I'm with you, man. Like, if you are good enough to make plays like that and go out in the games and dominate teams that way and make it work. Like, why should that stop you? Like I see the Michigan is like, like fine. Maybe if it gets to the point where we see it more often, but if it's a legit way of scoring goals and not just this specialty move, you see once every hundred years or whatever, like do it, like do it. If you know, you can do it, you're confident enough to make it work and you better go out and do it, but like do it. Like I'm, I'm all for that. Like I, I get it. Like it's, 
I, I'm with you. I don't disagree. I, I will say this though. It's the nature of these tournaments, man. Single elimination games. You're just trying not to make a mistake, right? Like the best team Canada men's team that I saw was Sochi. And most people don't really remember it because maybe the games were played at a weird time in Canadian time zones, but also because the games weren't all that exciting because they ground teams down. Like they barely gave up a scoring chance. And, but they, you know, they're, they're winning two one and all that in those games. They, They weren't playing with fire ever. Right. What we love about the world juniors is Canada has won and lost games like six, five, like routinely. And there's nothing is, is look at, I can appreciate defense and all that, but who doesn't love a six, five game? Six, five is, six, five might games. be the most exciting hockey score there is for whatever reason, just historically, there have been so many iconic six, five games. And usually those games include one team having a multiple goal lead and then giving it up in a back and forth tug of war type of game. That's to me what the world juniors is about. Like this, we're talking about emotional teenagers, right? This isn't supposed to lock it down and win one, nothing. Like I want to see Canada's skill go out there and, and show their thing, but I, I'm not coaching the team and I'm not being judged on whether they win or lose. And if you're being judged on whether they win or lose, I think you want to go safe. That that just seems to be the way hockey goes. It's not just Canada. That's, you know, that's, that's how it is. Two quick things. One, the one thing I will say is that if I'm on the other team and I see that the other team is trying Michigan's and they're not getting them, I definitely want to beat their ass. Like I definitely want to get them back, but not in like a, Oh, they're showboating way. Like, fuck, like, screw those guys. Like, I want to win. Like, it's a competitive thing. You just about dropped an F bomb. Okay. <laughs> don't don't uh, think that didn't go unnoticed. It's it's fine. It's not the first time I've done it on this on uh, on any SDPN property. Uh, the second thing is you mentioned six five as a score. I want to know if uh, in terms of that exciting score line, what's the very first game you think of when you think of six five. And I want to know if it's the same one that it that it is for me. No way it is because it's before your time. But I think of the 87 Canada Cup final, which was a best of three with Canada, Russia and all three games were six, five. That's I mean, that's that's okay. what I think of. That's what I think of historically, just like in those games are thought of for those that like lived it and and whatever is like some of the most exciting hockey ever. But then we've seen it in the World Juniors a bunch of times the, the, again, both wins and losses for Canada. That's not really the point. It's just like. When you have that many goals in a game, you you know, was, was the Saskatchewan World Junior Final, the, the Canada loss in overtime, I think was 6-5 to the U.S.? Uh, the- I would have to double check that, but also the uh, the year earlier in Ottawa when they came back and beat Russia uh, in a shootout, that was a 6-5 game. That I know yeah. for sure. Can you yeah. check the World Junior Final Saskatchewan? 2010 World Junior Saskatchewan. That was, was- that's a, the Amberley scored the game tying goal in that, right? Yeah, and I think John Carlson won it in overtime is in my mind. John Carlson won it. Yes, he did. Uh, where can I find this? Don't mind. Yeah, it was 6-5. See, and that game was insane. Like It, it was, was an so, insane game. Like, I think both teams pulled their goalies, if I'm not mistaken. Like, all four goalies played. Like, that's that's the chaos I live for. Like, that's what I want. Like, New Year's Eve, I think it's Canada, Sweden. It's New Year's. You want to be entertained. Like, that game should be 6-5. I honestly don't care who wins. But somebody score six and somebody score five and let's have some lead changes and chaos and excitement and like the jubilant celebrations. Like I, to me, that's what the world juniors is all about. Right. And I think it's so exciting for the kids. Like, like I, I know it became trendy for a while to like hate on this tournament or whatever, say it doesn't really matter. And like, okay. And in, in, if we want to go like cosmic, like what the, does anything really matter? Does game 38 of the NHL schedule really matter? But if- when did people say this tournament doesn't, Oh, I've seen that. There's like that sentiment out there, like, the, you know, because it became very large. Right. And then it was popular to kind of like hate on it a little bit or became sort of like a, a subgenre. But I'm I'm going the opposite. For me, it's like a sugar rush. Like, I think it's awesome to, to watch. And, and it's obviously so exciting for the kids and their families. And like it's over the holidays. Like, I think I think we should embrace the excitement of it. And that's why we need lots of goals and lots of Michigans and uh, money on the board. So to I'm your saying. point. To your point, though, it is fascinating that anything from the tournament over like a two week span. I was talking about this with another friend of mine that like anything big from it, like that becomes a massive deal, like nationally. Like one thing that comes to mind, I I forget the year, but it was when Canada lost, I think, to Finland in the in the knockout round. And then like just like Maxim Contois was on that team that year. He unfortunately was like subjected to, to terrible messages online. Like that became a national story. 
Like it's a world junior tournament with these 20 year olds who are hopefully going to be in the NHL. And then stuff comes from it that like we are discussing naturally. Like it's fascinating that for like two weeks, like that and like the world junior tournament, it becomes such a big thing in this country that like we discuss it. Like maybe not ad nauseum, but like it's something everyone talks about. Well, somewhere in the deep recesses of my brain, I knew that John Carlson scored that overtime goal and that it was a six five game. Like, I don't even know why that is. How many hockey games have I watched before then and since that I couldn't barely tell you a detail of? But I mean, that's that's what makes it fun, right? That's why I, I always am on about best on best. Like that stuff, it, like those games just take on more meaning. They, they have more layers than than typical games do. Like it's just it's just a fact of life. And you know, I think that's why we all watch the soccer World Cup in crazy numbers. I mean, I saw the, can- the Canadian TV numbers and that were like, they don't lie. It's the same same deal with World Juniors. People are compelled by it. They're compelled by the chaos. They're compelled by the fact that like not always the best team wins. I mean, that's single elimination sports. Uh, there's there's a bit of there's a bit of randomness in there and chaos and things can happen. And so, um, you know, I don't certainly advocate for. Let, let's let's keep some perspective win or lose but but let's also enjoy the the fun i mean this is it's just sports man sports are fun sports are supposed to be fun and they are fun they're really I fun when you win your fantasy football i gotta say like yeah they are absolutely there's a lot of joy in watching those games like tj hawkinson goes off last week for me yes <laughs> I was the biggest Vikings fan for five minutes while that was going oh, on. Oh man, dude, don't get me. I've watched so many, like, like I've watched so many games where I'm just like, I have no rooting interest, but this guy is going off for how many points? Are you, and he's, are you and watching he's like me, like game. where they're they're like they're starting the play, and I'm literally focused on my tight end, and I'm like, oh, is he blocking? Is he like, yeah, like, like, yeah. I'm not even really watching the game. I'm watching like my player in the game as much as the camera angles allow. I remember last year during that NFL, uh, during that last game of the year when the Raiders and the Chargers played against each other. And that was a game where like if they tied, they both could have made the playoffs and the Chargers found a way back into that game and forced OT. I was the biggest Justin Herbert fan and like him getting to overtime won me my league that year. Like that was I, I'm with you. I, I am the same. Like it's, it's crazy. It just has this power over me. But uh, I will be watching. Uh, the uh, final, well, the next two weeks of the NFL season at peace, knowing I pretty much have nothing to play for because I have no championship final to be in. It's better than the last two years. I've lost the last two years of my final, so there's no heartbreak for me this year, at least not in that fashion. Thank God. I'm going to be on pins and needles for like the next five days. Oh, my God. Because I have Josh Allen, and he plays on Monday night. Mm. And I have Ezekiel Elliott who who plays on Thursday night. And so it all unfolds. I have book like the, the earliest and latest games of the week are, you know, especially Allen is probably my most important player. So, um, yeah. Last one before we get to uh, some leftover questions in the Ask CJ uh, stocking. What is your fantasy football team name? When in Romo. I like when in Romo. Uh, I, I, had I to, literally yeah. made that when Tony Romo was the, the Cowboys quarterback because I'm a big Cowboys fan. I think our yes. league started, I want to say 2012. It might have been 11 or 13, but somewhere in that range. And I just stuck with it. I've never changed it. All I changed is my my icon was once him as the quarterback, and now it's him in the broadcast booth. I've, I've That's the only thing I've kept current. I like when in Romo. That's a good name. I used G.I. Joe Burrow this year. <laughs> G.I. Joe Burrow. So and, you switch uh, every year. Well, yeah, I've, I switch every now and again. I had Hey Darnold for Sam Darnold. I had Amari twenty six hundred, like for Amari Cooper. Um, who G.I. Joe Burrow but this here's the year? Thing, like our our fantasy site is crazy. It shows like our yeah. all time history. Like I can go, yeah, look, yeah, yeah. I can go look like my all time record against Mike Zeisberger, like over like fifteen years. Like it's actually cool. But I don't want to have a twenty fifteen championship, which I did have with Wen and Romo, and then. <laughs> Like my 2023 championship, I'm about to win. I don't want like some other random name. Like I want, I'm all about history, man. Are you calling your shot right now? Did you just say you're about to win? Oh yeah, it's guaranteed win week. That, how? Where do you think I need to get the thousand week. bucks to pay this Team Canada player with? <laughs> I need to. I need to win the. I need to win fantasy football because it's worth in our pool. It's worth somewhere like a nine hundred thousand bucks, something like that. Ooh, ooh, that's money. Yeah, so there's stakes here. And I'm just going to take that money and transfer it right to whoever scores the Michigan. So, oh my God. 
<laughs> that's that's a way to get you going fancy football all right cool we'll have to have a so before we end the year we have to make sure we have a fancy football corner and a movie corner we are going to do that on th- on friday we're going to do it before the year's out we're going to make you guess some more movie titles i don't have a okay. list actually I thought jesse everyone... blake was calling for that in the group chat yeah but like people have been calling for a period like it's 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 going to happen. So if you are watching this or listening to this, like let us know in the comments what movies CJ should be guessing. And we will get to some of them, if not all of them. Uh, I'm for gonna Friday. be nervous till we do that, because like I just know I'm so bad. Why at are you going to be nervous? It's fun. Like, it's so hard, though, if you haven't seen any movies. Yeah, of course. But that's the point It's going to be entertaining. Like we legit just spent the last like five minutes talking about fantasy football. People are going to be enthralled by that. Like, it's it's fun. Yeah. You know what I watched actually over the holidays because I was snowed in for a couple days. Spirited White, White Lotus season two. I've never got into that show, but I know Aubrey Plaza. But I feel like it's two, like I have, a, I have a celebrity people. People it watch is. it. I have a celebrity crush on on Aubrey Plaza, so like maybe that should be enough for me to get into it. I just haven't gotten into it. I'm up with the zeitgeist, man. I know what happened on there. I didn't watch season one, so but I did watch season two. But I feel like each, I feel like each season should be able to stand on its own. But I think there is some crossover between season one and season two with Jennifer Coolidge. Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm not going to ruin anything. But yes, there is apparently some crossover. OK, so uh, add that to your list, people, if you have not watched uh, The White Lotus, uh, which apparently CJ is now up on. I don't know. For me, like with TV shows like, man, there's just so much content out there. Like there's only Dude, so much I'm like interested in. I just binge watch it, though. Like I literally we were like like snowed in here Coburg Papa was actually supposed to come up and stay with me on the 23rd and 24th he wasn't able to like travel safely so I don't know I was just sitting around I was like I gotta watch something and then I'd seen everyone talking about this and I started it and then you know like eight hours later I'm done it or whatever it was long it was it was a slog I was young when it began and here I am <laughs> here I am today the age 10 years <laughs> but I, I enjoyed binged. it it was interesting I I binged watched uh, a show I really like called Abbott Elementary, which surrounds this uh, group of teachers and uh, a principal at this Philadelphia high school. And I hadn't watched any of season two. The very first episode of season two, uh, the teachers are trying to organize some kind of event and they bring in a very special guest. Gritty. Gritty shows up in an episode of Abbott Elementary uh, about a week earlier than what they're supposed to. It's, it's a hilarious episode. It's a hilarious show. Really love it. But uh, it was fun to see uh, hockey represented in a show that uh, I also enjoy in Philadelphia. Good, Very. There good. was there was no hockey in Italy in White Lotus. But I I I needed a break from hockey. Yeah, yeah. We all did. We all sort of did. This might be the least we've talked about hockey in any episode of CJ Show history. This might be the leak. I mean, maybe the, no. the, the second some, episode. We've gotten carried away a few times. We've gotten just, carried away. Like just literally talking. had whole episodes just like talking about whatever's on the top of our head, which is kind of what this show is so far. In all fairness, yes, we have had episodes where like we had the episode we talked about me moving. We talked about you moving to TSN. It's actually not about hockey, I guess, but like. This is definitely up there in terms of the ones where we just let our imaginations run wild. So thank you for bearing with us. Um, I do have questions, though, uh, oh, yeah? for a Wednesday. Hopefully there's not too many hockey you. questions because I can't. My, part of my brain is even on right now. OK, so the thing is, I'm is in white lotus are... mode, buddy. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> there are some <laughs> hockey questions here, but there also are some non hockey questions here. So okay. I could just try my absolute best to go through like the really like non hockey ones. There is a debate question here and I've tried to think about it and maybe you might have to carry this one, but like we've already been torn apart by chocolate and chips. How do you feel? Uh, this is from M manager Mike on Twitter. What are your all time top three Christmas candies? Oh, well, what counts as a Christmas candy is that is my next question. Like, are you are we able to lump in chocolate in this? Like and also like, do you know those? Do you know those lint chocolate balls? Yeah, those are probably my favorite. Like those things are like. They're they're an illicit drug to CJ. (laughs) And and I actually remember when I was working at Hockey Night in Canada back in the day, Elliot went Elliot Friedman went to like the lint store. 
I, I think there's one at the Yorkville Mall in Toronto. And he literally came in with, I'm not joking, like 300 of those things in a giant bag. What? I mean, very generous of Elliot, but I like ate my weight in lint chocolate <laughs> balls, like backstage at Hockey Night because Elliot brought so many. Like, no. I have to stay away from them now because I know they'll be bad. Like, I had one festive special during the holidays from Swiss Chalet, and I think you get like five in a pack. Like, there was no way I wasn't finishing all five immediately after dinner. Oh, my God. So that's Oof. that's like, like I don't want to reference a specific drug, but that's like that's my Achilles heel. Like I those lint chocolate balls, like they might be one, two, and three on my list. <laughs> also, illicit drugs. Uh, we we don't talk a lot about illicit drugs on this show. Hey, we Maybe did have an edible show. We did have an edible show. I was about to say if there's a good reason why we don't talk much about illicit drugs because that was a good time for you. <laughs> it wasn't, and I haven't touched one since. <laughs> Okay, so your official answer is lit chocolate balls, lit chocolate balls, lit chocolate balls. Yes, I mean, like I would have a candy cane. It doesn't really excite me. Like so, but lit chocolate balls excite me. Yes. Like if I just like if I knew was one was in the house right now, I'd probably like walk off camera and go eat it. But I oh can't. I, ha- I need to keep God. a distance. I need to keep distance. <laughs> okay, how about this one from Red Shark Pack? Uh, the longest flight delay you've ever experienced. Oh, man, I've had some long ones. I used to travel a ton and I cover winter sports. So I was in winter cities. Um, I don't even know how you answer that. So way back when I went, my buddy Mike Ben Bennett got married in London uh, in December 2010. And a group of us were over there and we were supposed to fly home from his wedding on December 17th. And no, December 20th. Pardon me. Mm-hmm. And a yeah. light. Just the smallest amount of snow fell in London on his wedding the day before. And we were like, oh, this is great. A Canadian guy marrying a British girl. And there's this little bit of snow. And and then we went to the airport and they're like, your flight has been rebooked to December 27th. Oh. And we and oh. I'll spare you all the blow by blow. But we, we ended up spending like three extra days in London and got home just before Christmas with like a lot of it was. So that was like a three day flight delay. So that's probably that might technically be the winner. Um. I'm really calm when I travel, though. Like, I never get upset. Like, once you've seen it all, you know, it's all going to work out. And I think the more I think the more calm and rational you are, you actually make better decisions when like when it's hitting the fan and when it just gets canceled and everybody's freaking out in the airport. Um, I once got stuck in Hawaii over a day or two on a flight. I uh, the Stanley Cup final Pittsburgh, San Jose. That was a tough travel Stanley Cup final 2017, 16. Um, I was supposed to fly back from San Jose to Pittsburgh via Denver. I oh, land in Denver. I this is this is a true story. I land in Denver, so the first leg of my flight, and they're like, "Your next flight to Pittsburgh is canceled, so we're going to send you to Newark." Fly to Newark. They're like, "Your next leg to Pittsburgh is canceled. We're going to send you to Chicago." Flew to Chicago, spent the night at the O'Hare Airport, and then the morning, the next morning, flew Chicago to Pittsburgh and went like basically right to the game. But oh I, I took God. it took me four flights to get from one city in the cup file to the other. And that was in oh. June. So that wasn't even all weather related. I don't know. I can't remember what was happening. Anyway, there's been a lot. But yeah, you know, as I say, the more experienced travel you are, these things just happen. Just be calm. There's more important things in life. You know, don't rail too much on Twitter about your travel experiences, especially if you're doing it for work, you know. Life from the advice from CJ. I just say, like, most people don't have sympathy for you. Like, it's your job. Oh, it's your job to travel between games in the Stanley Cup final. How tough that you must have multiple flights. Like, it's not really the end of the world, is all I'm saying. All I'm just going to say for my one tweet about WestJet that went out there. I was not uh, subtweeting you with that. I just mean, in general, I know like, hockey reporters tend to do this and I don't like it. I know, but I only did it because a good friend of mine did a hilarious photoshop and i had to share it um and and yeah like it i get it like a lot of people like to use their platforms and tweet at the different airlines and be like hey how dare you mess this up like i, I get like, it you know how i view that as a fo- i'm like so i follow you and you're using your follower account to try to get preferential treatment that's how i view it it's like you so you're using the fact that i and many other people follow you to try to like get air canada to stop what it's doing like Anyway, that's just how I view it. Maybe I'm a little too militant on that. I just think the sooner you recognize the game will be played, whether you get there or not, 
Like life will keep spinning. It's game 42 of the season and CJ stuck here and it's going to be tough. Like I actually never ended up missing a game. And I used to travel to 82 on commercial airlines to Leafs or close to 82, depending on the season. Um, and like, you usually always get there. Just sometimes it's not smooth. No. And also like the employees for these airlines too, like they don't like what's going on just as much as you do. You know, like uh, I'll spare a moment for those guys too. Like it's can't be easy for them to deal with all the, all the stupidness that's going on, especially at the holiday season with a big weather storm coming through. Like I overheard a WestJet employee saying like, we're in crisis mode right now. Like I, I felt, I felt for them. Like it, it sucks. Like, so, so to see, it's one thing to tweet at them, but to see people like get mad and, I, and actually I didn't see this this time around, but like to see people get mad at employees and like yell at them and berate them like that, like, nah, like that's, and here, that's bad form. Here's a quick pro tip. There's new legislation in the last year or two in Canada. And if your flight is delayed more than three hours, not by weather. So some of what just happened the last week doesn't apply. You can just fill a form out online and they will give you like, I've had multiple in the last year. I can't, I got, I just got a 20% off my next flight. I got mm -hmm. one. They, they gave me 500 bucks cash because it was, a, it was a longer delay. So if your flight's delayed, just stay calm, find that form and fill it out. It's really easy. It takes, I'm not joking, two minutes and they'll, they'll compensate you because there's new laws now. So maybe sometimes you get some of that money back, you know, on your trip. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, man. Uh, travel advice from cj we have to have another uh travel corner now look all these different sub uh segments on the cj show you come to learn things um the rest of the questions i have are hockey questions <laughs> okay that's fine i feel, okay. I feel like i've said enough that's fine um this one's from cab on discord when do we most likely see a timo meyer trade if one is to happen Probably on March 2nd or 3rd or something like that. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's when most of these trades happen. I, I think San Jose, though, is of a mind that they have to clear out some more cap space. Some of their more veteran players. Obviously, Timo Meyer is a little different situation because he's a restricted free agent, but he's he's due a big qualifying offer this summer. It would not surprise me to see him traded at some point before the deadline. Um, we'll see what they can do with Eric Carlson. Um, some others. But uh, yeah, I think I think their San Jose will be in a selling mode as we get close to the deadline, and those trades tend to happen really close to the actual day itself. Uh, from Kel's Otterstan Excel, which is probably the weirdest Discord name you can come across. How likely do you think a Carol Vimelka trade would be? Uh, I don't think it's that likely. Something will have to change for it to happen. He's having a great season for Arizona. Uh, at last look, and, and admittedly, I haven't looked in the last few days, but he was up near the top and goal saved above expected among NHL goaltenders. Uh, but I was told just before the holiday roster freeze went in that there'd been no expressions of interest from around the league in him. Now that that could change, of course. I, I also think he signed for another couple seasons. You know, the Coyotes don't have to trade him. Um, you know, given their recent track record, it suggests that they're willing to trade pretty much anyone, and they're they're very interested in stockpiling their futures. Uh, so. It could happen, but as of right now, I've got no reason to believe it will happen. Uh, from Florida man Matt Maroon, are the Lightning considered scrappy underdogs among the top teams? No. Just straight up just a no. I'm good with that. I mean, they've been <laughs> to three straight Stanley Cup finals. Like, come on. <laughs> like, I, know come it's on. Like, I know they're not lighting the world on fire to start the year, but they're still comfortably in a playoff spot. I can't think of any team that wants to play them. Uh, given their experience and their skill right through the lineup. That's a, that's just a, they're an impressive team. Like that's, they might be the most impressive organization in the NHL with what they've done in the last 10 years. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to twist my brain into a pretzel to like call them underdogs or whatever, a plucky engine trying to make its fourth straight cup final. Like, come on. <laughs> That's true. It's like, like the little engine that could <laughs> tries for another cup final appearance. They've, they've merely won 15 of their last 16 playoff series. What will they do next or whatever? Like, come on. John Cooper was a lawyer. He now seeks his fourth straight cup final appearance. Yes. You, yes. <laughs> That's why that was a no. <laughs> Hard no. All right. All right. From uh, the Nick Oakley on Twitter. Uh, what's the state of an extension with Kyle Dubas? Half the fan base wanted him gone after 10 games. They're pretty hard to argue with the team's results since. 
Yeah, I, I don't think anything's moved though. I mean, it's this is about the playoffs in Toronto. It's about evaluating the full season. You know, to my knowledge, nothing has changed on that front. Um, you know, Kyle Dubas said he was comfortable playing out the final season of this deal. Let's remember, there's there's two sides to a deal. Like, I think Kyle's in a great spot. Uh, even if the Leafs walk away from him, if he he maybe he walks away himself. I don't know how that's all going to play out. I think the way that the season unfolds and and what happens in the playoffs will have a bearing on it. But you know. He's uh, objectively been one of the better GMs. I know they haven't got over the hump, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I think we've he's been through this, that before. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Like, I don't want to like open Pandora's box and then be like, here's a short history of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, but, but I, I think Kyle's done a fantastic job. I've had multiple teams, like people work for other teams, like rave about them. I, I think the Leafs are one of the best organizations off the ice with everything they built under him with the sports science and, and skills training and, and everything they do. And I, he will have no trouble getting another job, whether it's in Toronto or, or elsewhere, but I don't think we'll know that until after the Leafs have played their last game of this season. There's a conversation to be had about Kyle Dubas's future, but I don't feel today is that day. Let's, let's keep Pandora. No, I'm bound to say close. something to radio myself on my own show. Yeah, so I, I, I get you. So like, let's, let's, me. Let, let, yeah, let's close that box. Uh, last question from Nerd Tested TV. Is there anything on the Detroit Red Wings being interested in Bo Horvat? If so, do you think Joe Valena would be an asset the Wings would be willing to trade away? I haven't heard that specifically. You know, I think the Wings are pretty comfortable with the additions they've made up front in the offseason. It's not to say it can't happen, um, but that that doesn't feel like a move they would make, but you know, I, I don't know. Like I, I, I also don't want to come out here and say there's no chance it happens. I just, I haven't caught any wind of that. And so I, I don't know what they'd be giving up. I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear though, that, you know, the Canucks are, are interested in, in actual players versus the picks that aren't yet attached to a player. And so, you know, if, if Detroit steps up, they'd probably be picking someone off their, their young player list or their prospect list rather than just taking uh, you know, a collection of draft picks. And that's going to do it for Ask CJ on this Wednesday. And that's going to do it for uh, the CJ show again on a Wednesday. You know, with the holidays and all that, uh, our schedule is a little bit out of whack. I believe our next episode will come out Friday. And then uh, next week, we should be back to normal. Unless there's something I'm missing there with the new year. But uh, yeah, uh, not a Monday, Thursday, but a Wednesday, Friday instead. It doesn't matter. I don't do you even know what day it is. Like, I don't know what day it is. I, I, it's see, it's in front of me. I see Wednesday, December 28th. See, I so didn't know I, that. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I, I just, it's only really in the summer for me that I just like lose track of time and days. Oh man. I'm not kidding. I've lost full track of everything right now. Oh my God. I got a stomach <laughs> full of Turkey though. Great meal by my brother last night. Hey, also shout out my moms for, for making some real good food the other night, man. Some, some good ham, some good curry goat, some rice, some vegetables. Nah, we, we, we was eating good at the McKenzie family home. We were eating real good. That's good to know, man. That's what it's all That's about. Good. That is what it's all about. Um, CJ, uh, I will see you on Friday. Uh, Producer Nick, thank you as always. Hopefully your holiday was good too. Thank you to everyone. Uh, for watching or consuming this podcast however you choose. Again, we'll be back on Friday with a brand new episode. For CJ, I'm Julian. Happy holidays, and we'll see you soon. Peace. The Chris Johnson Show. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Inside the game, twice a week. Follow Chris on Twitter at Reporter Chris. And follow Julian McKenzie at JK McKenzie. The Chris Johnston Show.